good. Uh, and you never know, it might not rain at all. Hey Google, good morning. Good morning, lucky dog. The time is 8.01 a.m. Currently in Deland, it's 66 and sunny. Today, there will be scattered thunderstorms with a forecasted high of 82 and a low of 58. Have a nice day. Okay, good morning, Ron. I see Ron's up and at him. Uh, he said he got his expert, uh, I don't know what he got yesterday, today four, but he got the chance to fly it a little bit, was having a, a lot of fun, and uh, they, they are a lot of fun. In case anyone's out there here is talking about a expert, and you really don't know what it is, here's a picture of it. This is a little RC airplane that it will take off straight up as you see it setting there. It'll go straight up in the air. You can flip a switch and then it'll go forward and fly just like an airplane. And uh, they're, they're really a lot of fun to fly. I've got one, they, they run a big sale on these things. And uh, you know, if any of you out there are into RC airplanes, this is a, a it's a fun little thing. It's a little quirky at times, but uh, uh, like I said, you can just hover it around. You can put a camera on it, uh, be a, a uh, video camera and uh, fly it with goggles. Um, it's an FPV camera and the, the cool thing about the camera when the thing goes forward and flies forward it'll uh, uh, transition so that when you're looking through these goggles it'll go hey uh, Denny says no storms on this side today so uh, on the west coast of Florida is going to be stormless so that'll be cool it, uh, hey Google uh, tell me a joke how many introverts does it take to screw in a light bulb? Why does it have to be a group activity? An introvert. <laughs> okay, let's go for one more. Hey Google, tell me a joke. Hey Google, tell me a joke. A woman once said she recognized me from the vegetarian club, but I'd never met her before. Before. I, it, they would never recognize me from a vegetarian club because I'm a meat eater. Uh, I'll eat some vegetables, but that's not my my th thing is vegetables. So, but anyways, that was pretty cool. Hey, did you see North Korea and South Korea signed a uh, peace agreement? But you know, the end of their war never ended. That war's been going on for 65 years, and. Uh, so they signed that, and so that means the Korean War is actually over. Uh, that's pretty, uh, pretty amazing. And I guess uh, North Korea said they're going to quit testing their nuclear bombs. Well, we'll see how it goes, but yeah. it's pretty good. I mean, I think that's awesome. You know, we need more peace in the world. You know, there's so much junk violence. You know, we watch all the the news, and it's like 90% is people are shooting each other, and uh, I uh, had a, uh, a guy I used to work with uh, gave me a call last night, or he had me call him. And his son works over in Deltona, is the next little town over here from where we live. It's a not the nicest place to live, and just constant shootings and stabbings and killings. And and his son's a paramedic on the fire department there. And he said on one night he had two calls, and one a guy shot and killed another guy, and another guy in the second call. A guy stabbed and killed another guy. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that tells you what kind of a neighborhood that is. You know, so, anyways, that's uh, what. And then he actually, this guy, he wanted to know if I wanted to come back to work. Hey, you want to come back to work? He said he was so busy and uh, he, he hired people. They don't want to work, you know. Or you hire somebody. We did upholstery. What we did is. Uh, I did uh, boat cushions, boat upholstery, did canvas work, and he said he had one guy, he said that uh, he was 27 years experience that he did upholstery, and he did like a, a 20 by 27 inch cushion. Now, uh, I could probably do that two hours at the most to take me to do one of those, and he said it took him three days <laughs> to do it, and he was experienced, you know. He had another kid who never come to work. He hired him, and he said he would never show up. He only came about half of the time to work on it. And so he said, "Hey, you want to come back to work?" I know. 
And he says, well, how about part-time? No. <laughs> you know, a couple hours a month? No. <laughs> and it's like, I don't, I, I don't think I could stand it anymore to go back. And that's a lot of work. I mean, stuff that we did there, and that's why my back and shoulders still hurt hanging off the side of boats and stuff. So uh, it's like, no, retirement's great. I, I think retirement's good. Hey, if anyone's out there watching, or if you're watching this later on, if you want to leave any questions, comments in the uh, comment and question box there, leave it. We'll talk about them. Talk about them from now or later on, either way. And uh, uh, gives us food to go by on it. I was looking at this uh, thing there. Uh, there Denny, Denny will like this one. And uh, about radiators you know a lot of times in the summer months your your car camper whatever will run hot because you know it's, the temperature is so hot and this guy had a really really cool idea how to make your radiator more efficient i'm going to put up a picture here and as you can see all you got to do is drill holes get a big hole saw and drill, drill holes and it lets more air get through your radiator and it will it'll help tremendously uh you know it'll cool your radiator light best so i don't know what y'all think but uh, i think this will work work really good so anytime you guys go on a trip or want to go up through the mountains where it's hot there uh, just get yourself a hole saw and uh and you know to cut some holes in your radiator that'll, that'll help a lot i i think that'll help you all out so uh I think Denny will probably enjoy that one. I think y'all should enjoy that one. It's pretty good. So I had to show that, share that with y'all. So, and Ron's... Explain to some people who think that might be a rough fix. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Well, you know, it could be. I shouldn't have to explain that. But it's like, don't do it. <laughs> if you think that's really right, it's like, you might think you're thinking over again, you know. So Ron says, has no rain up there in 77 today. So it looks like up around Myrtle Beach is going to be really nice nice today that's uh this is a good time of year you know um the uh you know the, the weather here has been just just really really good hey Google tell me something interesting according to Encyclopedia Britannica Spanish moss is sometimes used as a filler in packing boxes and even as upholstery that takes rustic decorating to a whole new level well, that's interesting. Spanish moss and upholstery, and uh, yes, for blondes, <laughs> radiator pictures for blondes. Yeah, that Spanish moss. I don't know if, if any of you have got inside upholstery. I did that all my life, but and they used to call this stuff horse hair. And that's what she's talking about. Spanish moss that hangs from the trees in the south, and they used to dry that and use it for upholstery for the the filler, and. Uh, it's actually not, they used to call it horse hair, and it's not horse hair. It's actually the moss that hangs on these trees here, especially in the south. And, you know, they treat it. That stuff uh, usually has bugs and stuff in it, so you have to treat it before you use it in anything. So you'll have a buggy upholstery if you don't. But, uh, uh, but that's what they used to use a lot in upholstery is that Spanish moss. Just, uh, it hangs all over the trees and stuff on it. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, actually, I wanted to show you another picture here of I me and Ron's been talking about these tiny whoops <coughs> an expert. Looks like Cassie's upset about something. Um, they, uh, this is a, a tiny whoop. This is what we've got. If you look at that thing in the center, it's a, uh, there's actually a camera on there. And you can put goggles on and fly this thing around like you're inside of it. And um, that, uh, um, I'm glad to see what's going on with Cassie. <laughs> yeah, big old flea on her face. Oh, face. yeah, Sue has to pick on her. <laughs> and uh, so anyways, that uh, that's a tiny whoop. And uh, also I want to kind of show you, if I have a, a drone. And uh, this, I want to show you a little video here. This is, uh, I have a Phantom 3 drone. And uh, I was flying it yesterday in the backyard. And... Uh, this I wanted to kind of show you what kind of footage you'd get. Looks like a big old rain cloud coming out there. But uh, you know, I just my yard's not very big, but you can fly this thing. This thing will basically fly itself. And uh, but this is a, a Phantom Three. I go up over on to kind of show you the, the landscape of our our neighborhood here. And uh, they're building a new um, 
uh, a development. You can see straight on back there, uh, which I don't know if I like that or not. This means more houses in our area, but they've been working on this thing for six months or so. And uh, you can see the bulldozer back there working in that, but they're putting a, an extension to this development here. Straight on out is International Speedway Route 92. And this little factory like you see there by the trees, that's a medical factory. They make hypodermic needles and medical stuff there. Oh, and you see the big old clouds coming up. Looks like it's going to rain. This is Delan Airport. That's how close we live to the airport, just on the other side of the trees. And uh, a lot of times you, the skydivers dive here. Skydive Delan uh, operates out of there. And they jump every day, all day long. And uh, actually, the Delan radio control field is kind of right back in the right in the center, back off the runway. They have a runway off the run airport that they use for uh, the Land Radio Control Club. It's not I used to belong to it, but I belong to one in Daytona. Uh, it's a lot more fun than <laughs> the one in the land. Those guys are kind of real happy over there. It makes it not fun. But it's the streets behind me there. and I just thought a heck of it, I had this video. I would throw it up here and uh, show you all uh, that. Uh, there's a magnolia tree coming down. I was up there probably less than 100 feet. It wasn't really very high. You can see, you can kind of see all over the place there. It's fun. Hey, this is what I do when I talk to my drone. This is a, a picture of my drone. I just landed. So I thought I'd share that with you guys this morning a little bit. It's fun to fly. I've had, actually, I got a couple of those. Ron says we have an air show this weekend. Oh, that'd be cool. I love air shows. Um, the Delan RC Club over here tomorrow and Sunday have um, uh, pylon racings. It's model air, airplane pylon racings. And I've really never seen that. I've seen, I think once somewhere I saw one that was live, a uh, bit full scale, you know. But uh, we might run over probably Sunday. Tomorrow we have our monthly meeting at our uh, RC field there, Delan or Daytona, <laughs> Daytona Radio Control Club. So we'll go over there tomorrow for the meeting, and uh, maybe Sunday we'll see what. Maybe we'll run across here and watch it. Maybe I'll film a little bit of that, put a uh, a video in my daily vlog. I've actually not been doing daily vlogs as often. It gets to be a lot trying to figure. You know, it's hard doing these channels. This isn't easy trying to come up with subjects, titles. You know. Oh, the Blue Angels ought to be cool. But, uh, I've seen the Blue Angels several times, and uh, I've seen them here. Daytona used to have one, I'm thinking it used to be every spring. Uh, Emory Riddle is right out of Daytona, and they're a college for aviation. And they used to put on a free air show uh, every spring, and they'd get Blue Angels, the Thunderbirds, and they did it right over the beach, right over the one hotel right there in, in Daytona. And uh, it used to be a cool air show. Drew a lot of people, but uh, they just kind of quit doing it, you know. So uh, I wish they would bring that back again. And then we used to always have the uh, Bloom uh, Fest in uh, New Smyrna. I forget what time of year that was either, but uh, uh, I think they're still doing that. I'm not sure. They were talking about getting rid of that too. And they'd have an air show, and uh, uh, if I don't know if any of you know who Patty Wagstaff is, she's a, a highly known aerobatic female pilot, and very good. And got to meet her uh, the one year, and uh, but it was fun. We used to go there and watch the air show. They used to do a nighttime air show. They would put like fireworks and stuff on the on the tips of the airplanes, and uh, it looks really cool. If you've never seen a nighttime air show, it's it's pretty awesome. And uh, so they used to have that New Smyrna every year, but again, I don't know if they're going to have it or not. They make some good stuff. You know, here's something what happens in these community events. Either they get an event and it's reasonable to go to and fun, and uh, then they quit having it. Or they have another event and they overprice it so much that it's unaffordable. They do one like Taste of the Land, our downtown, which is a great event. It started out how much it was maybe 10 bucks 15 bucks and uh, I don't know done things uh, I don't know what 25 or 30 bucks now it's not worth going to it's overpriced you know 
Ron said they have uh, three things at the same time, over 200,000 people. Wow. Sounds like a cool air show to go to. It would be a fun one. I think I would be going to that one. There's different ones down here. Um, there's a jet show over here by Lakeland. Uh, that's, I think, going on this weekend. But it's, it's, it's a ways to drive, and you got to go through Orlando, and it's a real pain to get there. But uh, I, I think that's going on this weekend over in Lakeland. Uh, so, yeah, there's all kinds of events going on. But, yeah, I wish they would, a lot of these events, they wouldn't overprice them. I, I don't, I never made that kind of money to put out 30, 40, 50 bucks to go to one event. Two people, that's over 100 bucks. It's like, that's too much, you know. Uh, I guess for people that have plenty of money, that wouldn't be bad. <laughs> that never occurred to me, you know. So, I think they need to control them. My book is people either need to quit going and quit paying the ridiculous prices and either two one of two things will happen they'll either quit happening which probably will the events that are affordable won't or they'll write, lower the price and uh, they probably quit having them and then the rich people couldn't go see them anyway so <laughs> my thoughts on that hey google tell us a joke how do you keep warm in a cold room you go to the corner because it's always 90 degrees <laughs> 90 degrees corner that's how I, how I keep warm is go to, to further south <laughs> get out of the cold because I do not like cold okay I think we're gonna cut it off I've kind of ran out of my things that I was gonna yap about today um, hey anybody's watching this later on after the uh, chat uh, give us a thumbs up uh, and uh, you know just hit the thumbs up the, yeah, for the rich uh, and not for the average guy yeah, I've never a lot of things are for the rich. They don't know what rich and poor really means. <laughs> uh, you get under 12000 a year, you're poor. I've never made over 12000 a year in my life. <laughs> uh, so anyways, if, uh, I said, if you're watching this later on, uh, leave your comments in the comment section. We'll, uh, um, we'll, we'll comment about tomorrow, you know, if you're watching this later on. And uh, if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Uh, Hit the little bell at the top and that will notify you whenever uh, we've got a new uh, vlog or, or a new uh, live stream going on. So, uh, everybody, it's Friday. Uh, weekend's coming up. First retired people don't mean as much, but if you're working, uh, work for the weekend. <laughs> so, hey, we'll see everybody again uh, probably tomorrow. I'll probably be live at the flying field. So, uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see everybody uh, again the next time. <laughs>